Good morning, everybody. It's Brian. Hope you're doing well today. Had a good weekend. It's Monday. We're here for a quick live session. It's the 11th, 13th, <laughs> 13th of July. Uh, so here we are, 13th of July. Going to run through uh, what we're looking at in Forex, pop over to the futures market, look at some key levels and some potential trade ideas there, and then over to crypto, at least on Bitcoin and Ethereum, and talk about key levels and potential trade ideas there. And then we'll uh, wrap it up and let you guys get on with the day, do your trade, see how things are working out for you, and move from there. Uh, big thing is that you've got a plan. Uh, as I say every day, I know I sound like a broken record, and that's okay, because it's what makes the difference between long-term success and ultimate failure. Uh, the, the thing that, that, that determines that is having a plan and consistently executing your plan. Uh, because really, if you focus on on the process, if you've got a plan, I, I mean, you can't just say, hey, I've got a plan to come in and make blah, blah, blah. That's, that's not really the plan. The plan means you've got directives that say, when this happens, this happens, this happens, and this happens, then you're gonna take this action. And once you take that action, you're gonna manage it in this certain way. That action is gonna have you know, a risk percentage that's attached to it, and then you've got a reward. You say, I'm gonna take reward when these things happen. And as long as, as, as your plan is thought out and it's based on something that's quantifiable, which we're gonna talk about in just a second, based on something quantifiable and has good mathematical bones behind it, meaning that you're winning more than you're losing. So not necessarily winning more times than you're losing because you can have a negative win rate. Well, I say negative, you can't have a negative win rate. You can have a, a win rate that's below 50% and you can still be profitable. You don't have to have these 80% win rates. You know, you can you can have a 40% win rate and still be very, very profitable. Uh, so it's, as long as you're winning more than you're losing. So if, you, if you're risking 1%, you're winning 2%, 3%, you know, that, that's, that's a good, again, has good mathematical bones behind it. Over time, even if you flip a coin, if you're, if you're losing one and you're winning three, even if you're a coin flip, you're gonna make money. Uh, or at least over the long term, you're gonna be profit, you're gonna be on the plot positive sign of that of that uh, uh, watermark there. So have a plan, stick to the plan, and as long as you're working the process and aren't getting distracted or focused on what the outcome is, as long as you're working the process, it all takes care of itself. Uh, so that's what we need to always work on is, is process, process, process. So anyway, that was my deep thoughts, I guess, for the morning. What's going on? Not a lot of news this week. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty light week to, to kick things off. Uh, we don't have any high impact news for today that we need to worry about. So, uh, you know, for the most part, it's clear, clear sailing today. Uh, there is, at uh, 1030, we do have some pound news coming up. Uh, Bank of England Governor Bailey is speaking and uh, FOMC Williams is speaking at 10.30. Um, I, you know, FOMC stuff, really, you know, it's, it's going to have a, an impact when it's the chair. So I, yeah, I think we're, we're all right um, as far as, as U.S. US trades go. Um, certainly nothing immediate that we need to worry about. And if, if the market starts, you know, you, you know what to look for when, you know, when you start seeing spreads widen, the market kind of going crazy, that's an indication that you've got something news driven that's happening. Uh, so in Forex especially, uh, but I think for, for now we're all right. So let's go ahead and have a look at what, what could we be trading, what could we be looking at this morning as we get going. Uh, pound has been a weak currency, you know, pretty much you know, for, the, for the morning so far. Uh, especially coming into this morning, the pound is, is the weaker currency of the eight that we watch. So we've got a weak pound. Uh, what could be paired against? Well, you know, the, the Euro and the New Zealand have both been uh, the strongest currencies over here. Uh, but looking at pound versus the New Zealand, you know, it's already moved 120 pips for the day. Uh, its average is, you know, on a 15-day on a average, is about 127. 30 days, 150. So, you know, if the pound really continues moving, there could be something there. Although, yeah, I, I always, I have a little aversion to trading the New Zealand uh, because of the of the currencies that we watch, it's definitely one of the lightest. So you get these big swings in New Zealand. It's very volatile because you, you know one big order comes in and consumes the limited uh, 
number of, of limit orders that are waiting. So it's because it's it's a lighter volume currency. So you see these big big up and downs with it. Um, New, New Zealand is definitely. Some people love it. Some people don't. I'm one of the ones that don't. <laughs> so anyway, you've got a good divergence between the the pound and the New Zealand. Uh, we would certainly need, you know, as the morning gets started, we'd need to see the, the pound really give us another big push to the to the weaker side. Uh, other things to look at, though, if we look kind of more in the middle for divergence, you've got the euro versus the yen over here that's diverging from one another. Uh, euro versus the yen is kind of interesting. It's it's moved 65 pips for the day. Uh, average is 75 on a 15 day. Or on a five, rather eighty to a hundred on the on the thirty. But we look at these smaller range, you know, the smaller uh, intervals here, the, the the five and the fifteen, which is more recently of what it's been moving. I don't remember there was a big day back here that kind of skewed our our numbers. Uh, you know, so this this may already be kind of this move may be ranged out, I and mean, we're sixty on an average of eighty. I mean, it could move a little more, and it has in the past. If we look at that 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 thirty day range, it certainly has had some bigger days. But is there something better? I mean, is there a, is there a better opportunity? Uh, let's just kind of keep looking and see if there's anything that's a little better for us uh, that we might be able to take. Uh, CAD versus the yen. You know, it's moved forty pips on the day. Average is about sixty to to seventy. Yeah. 43, 50s. I don't know, man. It's it's not looking quite quite as nice as I. You know, we'd like to see something that's got a typical range that's you know fairly fairly high, uh, and our current range you know is is it's kind of a fraction of that versus you know a higher percentage. Like right now, we're looking at these, and they're probably. 75 80 percent of their current range and that's that's not real attractive to me um, so just kind of looking through seeing what else euro versus the cad those are trading right together for the day there's not a lot of divergence um, that one that one's great you know so like the euro versus the cad just from a, a standpoint here you know it's moved 41 pips for the day its average is 80 you know but <laughs> We look at this, and we can see why it's only moved 40 pips for the day. They're they're trading together. This could be a really interesting trade, though. You know, especially on a, going down to like a one minute and seeing if we get some really nice a nice burst of divergence with that euro pushing to strength and the CAD pushing to weakness, breaking below that midpoint. That euro versus the the Canadian could be a very interesting trade, simply because we're we're at about 50 percent of its of its typical range. So that could be a, an interesting trade for us. So we need to wait. We have to be patient to see if we get this uh, this this Canadian below the midpoint here, and uh, allow us to take that against the uh, the euro. Um, beyond that, I really don't see much else. Uh, euro versus the USD. It's one I seldom look at, but I mean again, here on the chart, not, they're, they're trading right together. It's kind of the same story as the euro versus the CAD. Uh, it's really in the consolidation. You know, Euro versus the USD, it's moved 37 pips on an average of 70. Uh, so I mean, again, 75 really. A lot of range, a lot of potential range, but um, we're not seeing the divergence that we need to see. So right now, for for just taking a trade out of the gate this morning, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass on it because the ones that where we're seeing the divergence. And, and looking at, at currencies that have been moving leading up to the session, the ones that we're, we're seeing as opportunity have already moved a large percentage of their typical range. The ones that um, you know haven't moved, we can see why they haven't moved because they're, they're, they're trading right together. If we look at the, at the, at the currency strength meter, they're, they're, they're trading in unison with one another. They're, there's really no divergence. One isn't being heavily bought, one isn't being heavily sold. They're, they're both in that same boat where you know, they're, they're being bought at the same time. Uh, but that does say you know, it is something to watch, especially as the US session gets underway a little bit more here. Uh, we, could see, uh, we could see some movement, which would allow us to, to pair up that you know, euro, euro versus the USD or Euro versus the CAD. Uh, you know, if, if one of those uh, 
starts being very heavily sold, that would be the opportunity to break out of that little range that we've been in uh, and, and find some potential opportunity. But it's, it's not that right out of the gate trade that we look for you know, first thing in the morning. I don't, I don't see one of those. But I do see opportunity uh, you know, looking at those ranges on, on some future trades today on either the Euro CAD or the Euro USD simply because of the fact that we're trading in that very small range and uh, you know, it, at some point it's going to return to that mean. It's going to return to that, that larger average. You know, will it be today? I don't know. Might be tonight, might be tomorrow morning. Um, but it'll get there. It's, it's, it's going to return to that. And when it does, it's going to break out of that range and that'll give us the chance to, to, to take that trade and move on with it. All right, so watch those. We've got a tight range right now. Watch for breakouts of that, of that 40, 30, 40 pip channel and see, see if we can find some movement there. But it's not, a, it's not a morning breakout trade, but it is something to watch on those currencies as we get further into the session. All right, on um, switching gears over here on, on, on futures, big rally on Friday. It's very surprising. Uh, remember on Friday, everything was mixed. Our biases were mixed when we came in, this, in, in the morning. We looked through it. Um, we had long bias on the four hour, short bias on the 30 minute. And, uh, and that was on everything. It was across the board on, on S&P, crude and gold. The, the biases were all mixed. So I took off, went for a bike ride. <laughs> My son and I uh, took some, some friends, and you know, his, his cousin and some friends, and uh, went down the Trinity River Trail in, in Fort Worth and just, just rode and had a really nice day of it. Super hot because it's blazing hot here in Texas right now, but it was a beautiful day. It's a great day and it was good to be away from the charts. So I was very surprised when I, when I came back that afternoon and saw that giant rally. <laughs> just crazy. You look at the 30 minute over here. It was just, it was just an insane straight up rally. And we've, we've now uh, crested 3,200 on, uh, on the S and P, so you know, interesting, interesting run that we've had here uh, today. Coming into the session, four-hour bias is long still, and thirty-minute bias is long. What would we be looking at for potential trading opportunities? Well, uh, we'd want to see it pull back a little bit. Uh, will it? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you know, you would expect at some point that reality is going to catch up with this is, is, you know, earnings start hitting and jobs aren't being recreated at the pace that we expect and people aren't going back to work and we've got states looking at shutting down again. Texas is actually one of those considering kind of kicking around potentially shutting down again. Uh, you know, how, how, you know, I, I'm kind of at a loss for words, as you can tell, which is kind of odd for me. I, I, I like to talk. But, you know, the reality is, you know, this is this is why we don't constantly try to call tops either. You know, we're looking to trade with the trend, and right now the trend is up. So we'd continue to look for long opportunities. We'd look for opportunities to trade long on the S&P. Um, where would that be from? Well, we, we can look for pullbacks. We can see here the 3187, 3190 area is key. Uh, that's already been tested a couple of times this morning, uh, but we could, if we pull back to this 3190, that'd be a great spot for us to look to uh, find potential buying opportunities off of. 3170 would be even a little bit better if we pull back. You know, we could look for a bounce off of one of those key areas. Uh, there was a gap, you know, between where we closed and where we opened over here. So uh, that that gap, which it, it has kind of been filled overnight a couple of times. Um, here, as the regular trading hours get started, you know, it, it is very possible we could come down and, and again kind of fill that gap before it moves on. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what, what actually happens. But, you know, so starting things off, we could look for, we could look for potential pullbacks. So if we can pull back to this 3180, which is the first stop, uh, I'm sorry, 3190, uh, which is this first stop over here, and then if it breaks through that, you know, this 3170 would be would be the next area down that we'd be that we'd be looking at for potential bounce style trades. Uh, if we're looking for breakouts, we got a ways to go. 
Um, you know, 3,200 is going to be a decision point. It's a big whole number. It's going to be a decision point for this. You know, can it stay above 3,200? If it breaks above, our next stop's 3,220, basically. 3,218, 3,220 is the next stop above it. Um, you know, it can very easily run up to that. Uh, what was the actual high that we had? Oh, that was the high. 3,218 was the high on the, on the rally from... Uh, from back in in March. Yeah, 30 so 3200 32, 3220 basically was that uh, was that high. So, you know, very possible we re we retest that, especially if we open this session and stay above 3200, it's very possible it rolls on to 3220. I I'd, I'd like to see it pull back though. If we could pull back to you know, this 30 3170 even 31 90. I'd like to buy it a, a little cheaper than that and take it off of there. Obviously, the, the other way of, of looking at this is um, that method that we have been using for the small account challenge, which we haven't had a, a trade uh, using that method in quite a while. It's been going on two weeks now. That's okay. Remember, you know, we're focused on the process, not, not taking trades. And sometimes there's times when you simply don't have trades that meet your plan. So uh, using that method, we would, again, be looking for long trades that we want to see a pullback. And as the market pulls back, we'd be looking for it to make lower highs and lower lows. And then we time our entry, especially around the key area, uh, as, it, as it begins to break through that previously closed lower high. And then we would take it long off of that breakout. You know, so uh, just an example of that, and obviously this wasn't a trade, but this is in off hours, but an example of that using the 30 minute where my cursor is here, you know, we're making lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. Price finally breaks through that lower high, and that's where we would, would enter to go long. And then have a, you know, three to one risk reward ratio. So that's the other way of looking at it. But uh, key levels for this 3190, 3170. Um, potentially even 3180 so it's basically 10 10 point levels today right if there's 3180 just because of where it closed I, I could I could really see price floating back down to this uh, the target for the day though the target would be this 3218 3220 which was the uh, the previous high of the actual rally itself so um, you know well no one knows what's going to happen a lot of folks are going to be calling this as a top today, too. By the way, uh, which is fine. You know, again, if you're if you're looking to find a top edge and short the market, you, know, you don't want to just do that for no reason at all. Uh, but a counter trend trade, if we push to this 3220, 3218, 3220, would be a great spot to look to sell it. Uh, of course, like anything else, you're going to have a stop loss. You've got to say, you know, where's my pain point? Where am I? How far against me am I willing to let this go before I bail out of it? So, you know, if you are looking for a counter trend trade from 3218, 3220, just make sure you've got a stop loss and take reasonable risk so that, you know, if it just blows through that like a freight train that it was on, on Friday and has been since March, you know, uh, if it just continues, if that freight train just continues moving, you know, you've got to at some point be able to, to, to jump off and take your, take your hit. Yeah, so um, anyway, spent more time than I probably need to on this, but uh, ultimately still looking at long trading opportunities. We'd like to see it pull back a little bit before we buy, but it is in a current long bias on the four hour and 30 minute. Uh, crude is, is technically mixed for us. We're in a long bias still, but um, it's, it's mixed coming into the morning. Uh, if this stays up, we'll see it flip back over, but your, your points up here to look for, you know, if it, if it breaks through this, uh, this, this 40, 30 area would be our, our breakout point on the long side. So if it breaks through 40, 30, we'd look for long trading opportunities. Um, and, you know, pullbacks down to 39, 60, 39, 80 would be uh, buying opportunities from there as well. Uh, but right now, technically this is mixed. So we'd, we'd really need to see this bias uh, come into alignment with the four hour before we're able to take a trade on it. So, you know, if it pulls back and continues to run shorter again, then you know it's, it's 
nothing happens. If it closes above this and, and our, our shorter term moving average flips over and crosses above that longer term moving average, then of course we'd have the bias in alignment and we'd be able to continue to look for those, those buying opportunities. But right now, technically, it's a mixed bias and you don't do anything. On gold, uh, we're in a long bias, so you know, four hours long, 30 minutes is long as well. Uh, we've, we've been you know, kind of establishing a little bit of a top up here. You know, we've got kind of a top edge up here around this 1815 area. So breakouts above 1815, 1816 would be long opportunities for us. Uh, also, you know, the other way to look at it is pullbacks down to 1800, 1810. You know, see if we can get pullbacks to those key areas and then look to go long from there. Of course, that, that the trading method that we talk about quite a bit here and we've been focused on for, for one of our account challenges is simply to you know, be patient. We're looking for long opportunities. If we begin making lower highs in the 30 minute, we would trail that stop down, lower high, lower low, right? We'd, we'd trail our, our entry point down at the top of that previously closed lower high and uh, see if we can break out from there, which is, I think, a great combination of the two. Uh, you know, as far as being able to, to trade and take advantage of those pullbacks, but still looking for uh, ways to trade with the trend, which is by far continues to be the, you know, the safest method of, of trading. Of course, you know, a lot of people want to go out and just swing for the fences. They want the home run every time. And, um, you know, remember, if you're always shooting for a home run, you're, if, if you're always just walking out and swinging as hard as you can, at the, you know, it's a baseball analogy for those, for those that don't, but if you're always swinging for the fences, you're going to strike out a lot. And that's okay as long as you've taken you know, a small risk with each one of those swings and then giving yourself opportunity for big reward to when you do connect and you, and you hit that home run, you hit it out of the park, you're actually allowing it to, 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 to really move and take full advantage of that movement. The challenge is a lot of traders want those home runs. They're taking a lot of risk and they're swinging and they're missing and their account keeps dwindling, dwindling, dwindling. And then when they do connect and they get that trade that really takes off, they close it out the second they get to break even or a little above break even because they're, they're trading from a, a, a fear standpoint or just a focus on outcome, uh, wanting that, you know, because it's typically driven by something else. There's typically something psychological driving that need to constantly swing for those, those swing for the fences, right? Uh, consistent base hits, that's what wins games. You know, or, or using football analogy, blocking and tackling is what wins games. The defensive game wins, wins games. And that's where you know having good money management comes in and sticking to your plan, uh, using the momentum of the market to our advantage versus trying to constantly get in front of it. Uh, I, I said the other day, the market's like a freight train. It's just gonna keep, it's, it does not stop quickly. Does a freight train stop and then reverse and can it, can it back up? Yeah, absolutely. But it takes a long time to stop and then when it starts to reverse, it takes a long time to, to actually get momentum to go the other direction as well. You gotta, that's, that's like the market. The market's a freight train just cranking along. And if, if we keep jumping in front of it, hoping that the market's going to reverse, we're going to get run over a lot before we're right. So I know I, that threw a lot, that's a whole bunch of different, different analogies in, in one sentence or one little train of thought. But you, you get what I'm saying about this. So. Keep it simple. Look at the stuff that, that, that matters. Use money, good money management. That's where that's what wins the games, and uh, and roll from there. Into um, quickly looking at Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, just changing gears to this over here real quickly. Uh, the the bias is still long on on ETH. It's had a pretty steady run again, but we're we're topping out. You know this 244. It's been struggling, struggling, struggling. You know even if we go back quite a bit. You know, this 240, 244, 245 area has definitely been some struggle for Ethereum. If we can break it, you know, there, well, I can see us having a pretty good run uh, back towards 300 at some point. But uh, for right now, this 244, 245 area is a, a big uh, resistance level. So uh, we're below it again right now. Uh, the bias is long. If we can pull back to this 242, that'd be a good spot to buy off of and see if it can continue long from there. Uh, but you know, we are looking for long trading opportunities on Ethereum. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, same thing. You know, it's it's kind of been in a mixed. It's kind of hit a hit a channel here for a bit. Um, this 90, 9400 has been a, 
a, a key level that it keeps rappelling off of or, or, or below it right now. So, you know, looking for buying opportunities coming up to this level certainly would be a good opportunity for us. So, you know, potentially, you know, down here at 32.50, you know, looking at 32.50 as a pullback and seeing, or 32, sorry, 92.50 as a, as a pullback and then uh, see if we can continue, continue long for this. But uh, for right now, you know, we are looking continued, continued buys now. So anyway, let's leave it at that. I'll leave my, my commentary on, on crypto off of things other than uh, as the U.S. continues to, to roll for and push for a uh, uh, move to digital currencies and, and away from cash, it might be a good time to start looking at some privacy coins. You know, some 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 things that are yeah, Ethereum, Bitcoin. You know, are still tracked and are being watched and are are regulated. They can't really be. I mean, they can be used as cash, which is beautiful. And they're very widely accepted because they're so popular. But uh, privacy coins. If you don't want insight over every thing that you do and movement that you do, you might consider looking at privacy coins. I think privacy coins are going to see more and more and more interest, especially as things that are unfolding in this country continue to unfold. So anyway, just leave it at that. So that's it for the morning. Um, you know, if we have if we have some trading opportunities based on the, the trade plan we're using for the for the small account challenge, we'll post those up. And that's Obviously, what I, what I mentioned before, looking at the S&P, we're looking for pullbacks where we've got a lower high, lower low, and then we start trailing our, our entry point in a long position off of those lower highs that have been established. And you know, if we, if we get into a trade there, we'll, we'll post it up and let you know what it was and why it was. All right, so that's it for now. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.